Sing me a song about Jesus. Sing me a song about his love. Sing with all your might every day and night. Make the hallelujahs roll. Sing out the blessed old story. Tell how he gave the victory. Dying on a tree, all for you and me. How he came and made me whole. Sing me a song about Jesus. About Jesus. Sing me a song about his love. About his love. Sing with all your mind. Sing it every day and night. Sing it if the way is bright or dim. Sing me a song about Jesus. About Jesus. Sing me a song about his love. About his love. Sing about his grace. Till you see his face, sing me a song about him. Jesus, the wonderful Savior, guides me along the rugged way. Never lets me fall, hears my feeble call, makes the way so bright for me. I'll sing. Sing me a song about Jesus. About Jesus. Sing me a song about His love. About His love. Sing with all your might. Sing it every day and night. Sing it if the way is bright or dim. Sing me a song about Jesus. About Jesus. Sing me a song about His love. About His love. Sing about His grace till you see His face. Sing me a song about him. Sing about his grace till you see his face. Sing me a song about Sing me a song about Sing me a song about him. You heard the story of Paul and Silas. How they were bound and thrown into jail. They did not worry, they kept on praying. They were serving a God that could not fail. That could not fail. But then at midnight, God sent an earthquake. That whole foundation began to shake. Those prison doors flew open wide. And Paul and Silas stepped outside. Yes, he'll. Please stand with me as we sing Revive Us Again. We'll sing first, second, and last. Everybody stand if you're physically able and sing it out with me this evening. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, and the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, and the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. On the last, sing it out. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May it so be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, and the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, and the glory. Revive us again. And one day, praise God, we're going to get to heaven. Amen. When we all get to heaven, what a great song. Let's sing it out this evening. First, second, uh, first, third, and the last of this great song. Sing. Let's start it again. I, I missed my key there. There we go. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he'll prevail. 
prepared for us a place. Sing it out now. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Watch me now. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. We'll try to start this second one better. Well, let us then be true and faithful. Sing it out now. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. On the last now, onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be home. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Thank you so much for that good singing this evening. Great to see you here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings upon the service this evening. Father, we love you. We thank you for the privilege we have to be in church. We thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. We thank you for uh, the opportunity to hear Brother Tyler tonight. Bless him as he comes in a few minutes to preach your word. Give him power. Use him, I pray. Go speak through him to our hearts that we be more like you. And thank you for our pastor. Bless him as he's away for another day or so. And would you just bring him back safely? And, Lord, I pray that you just guide and direct in everything we do tonight, our prayer time. Would you make it a sweet time as we bring before your presence and into your uh, presence these uh, prayer requests that we have on our heart and, on our, uh, and, and in our lives. And so, Father, you bless there in a special way. Bless our uh, uh, Spanish church tonight as they're meeting and the preaching there and, and the, uh, the teens and Brother Zach as he preaches to them and the, the children Brother Adam, as he preaches to them, and, and, and then, of course, Brother Mike and all the workers there in the discipleship, bless them in a special way tonight. And, Father, we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory for all you do because you are our Heavenly Father, and you are a great, great God. We praise you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Let me just mention uh, here uh, just a second. Uh, let me mention a prayer request and so forth. But before I do that, let me... Of some special days coming up in our Sunday school uh, with a special day on October the 3rd, uh, our open house Sunday, and uh, our Pack the Pew uh, fan, friends and family. I think we've been in a bunch of names, but and then Children's Sunday on October the 10th, and also on that October 10th, a time of a baby dedication, and then Hero Sunday, and I don't know who your hero is. A lot of people got a lot of different heroes, and, uh, and I know one thing. It's good to have a hero that can come with you to church. And I'm asking God, and you pray with me, I'm asking God to allow my doctor to come. He's told me he would come, and he's one of my heroes in the medical field. And I have great, great respect and honor for him. And I'm praying, my cardiologist, I'm praying that he comes that Sunday. And uh, then a roundup Sunday, with, and pray God will do some great things uh, that week on Friday. And then again on Saturday and Sunday as we try to reach a lot of people with the gospel and have the gospel preached to at least a 1,000 people that weekend. And we're asking God to do some special things for that on the 24th of October. And then, of course, thank God for his goodness and for all he's going to do even this coming Sunday and the next couple of Sundays before we start our program. But I just wanted to mention those and uh, tonight before we start our prayer time uh, this evening. And so let me get to the prayer time, a prayer request, and so forth. Uh, uh, our mission of the week, Lee and Chrissy Watts and the God and Country Ministry. Of course, they represent us in the Kentucky State Capitol as representative for us. He served there, Brother Watts has, for many years as a chaplain. 
He keeps before those in the state government the freedoms we hold dear and the importance of how the law passed, passed affects the people in our state. He holds God and country rallies across the state and speaks in many churches along with working with candidates and elected officials. He's a great defender of the faith in his government circles. And we've supported him now for 15 years. And he's been here several times. Every so often, he'll just show up and come in and set in on a service. And so I'm excited about that. By the way, I started off on it and didn't ask the question, does anybody need one of these? Anybody that didn't get one, raise your hand. Here's a couple over here. All right, one here. All right, if y'all just quickly get a couple of those out, that'd be great. Thank you, Brother Andrew, for that. One there and a couple over here. I'm going to go ahead for sake of time while you're getting those and go through some of the prayer requests, and then, and then we'll take some prayer requests. Uh, continue to pray for Bobby Grady. Uh, he was admitted to ICU last night. He call, I called him, and, and then he called me back this afternoon. I could not go see him yet, but he's in ICU and uh, has had several health concerns. They believe he's had a, 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 a heart attack for one thing. Uh, he's got some uh, uh, um, uh, infection in his body. Uh, he's got um, a possibly a partially collapsed lung. He's just got some major issues. It's not on here. We couldn't put it all on there, but I wanted to mention it to you. Most of those are non-COVID related. They didn't got anything to do with COVID. It just got to do with his health issues. So Bobby did call me, and uh, they're going to take his, his uh, port where they go in, and they were going to do uh, uh, dialysis this afternoon and then take that out. They think that may be where the infection is coming from, and they're going to leave it out two days and then put one back in somewhere for, his, uh, for Friday. So be in prayer for Bobby's and not, not doing well. And then uh, also, praise God for Aaron and recovering at home. What a miracle that is, and we're so excited about that. And then for James Eisenbach, still in the hospital. He had a rough day yesterday. Uh, he's uh, doing a little better today, uh, but he uh, uh, needs our prayers much. And let's pray much for, uh, for James. Uh, he, uh, uh, that God will continue to help him get better. Uh, in that thing, and so it's, it's very important. He's really uh, fighting the battle there physically. And then Mark Estes is back in the hospital with complications due to the COVID. He's got, uh, he's got uh, fluid in his abdomen and some other problems and so forth, and so uh, he can't, no one can go see him. They got him in the COVID unit. Uh, he and I have talked on the phone this afternoon and uh, prayed with him over the phone and so forth. And so continue to pray for him. And then there's arrangements mentioned there for the funeral arrangements for Anna Renfro, uh, if anybody's interested. It'll also be live streamed if anybody wants to watch it. She, of course, was a member of our church for years and years and years. When I think of Miss Renfro, I think of going back by the nursery and looking in the bed babies and with, a, with a rocking chairs and her holding a baby, rocking in the rocking chair. I can see her doing it. Every time I'd go by, it seemed like she was in a rocking chair rocking a baby. I don't know why that stuck in my mind, but every time I think of her, that's what I think. But it was sweet. I got to go see her uh, just a little while, just about a week before she passed. I went out to see her and prayed with her, and we sang songs together. And, uh, and man, when I started singing, she knew the songs better than I did, and she had to help me out. But we had a good time together and prayed together. But she's in heaven now with Jesus. And then pray for David Baker, the father of Charlie Baker, is having some issues with his heart. And then continue to pray for the following people. One, I want to mention, because it's Sheila's niece, Carrie Atkinson, did get a test done yesterday. She has triple negative breast cancer, which makes it harder to treat. Because some of the things that we treat her with will not work. And so she has triple negative uh, uh, breast cancer and two legions on her, uh, on her lung and one legion on her liver, which could be nothing, but they do a PET scan tomorrow, and tomorrow night she finds out what that is. And so please pray for her. We mentioned here that day she has two small children, one nine-month-old and one seven-year-old uh, boys, two little boys. So pray for them. And then for Michelle, uh, she's, uh, she is home but struggling with walking. Am I right about that? They're having to help her. Her husband's having to help her everywhere she goes. She cannot walk. And so we really need to be in prayer for her. And then Billy McClanahan, I hope I'm saying his right, name right. I did get an update on him today also. And the COVID he had did not affect the, can the cancer. And the COVID together didn't take him down. But he's, he's, he's doing okay uh, from the COVID. He's coming out of that. But, of course, he's got the cancer. And so we need to pray that God will bless there. He's fixing to start his cancer treatments uh, 
and so pray about that. And then Calvin Eisenbach, of course, is the same as he was before. I've heard nothing different. Grayson Tharp, Wanda Fanning, Dolores Wilson, and Joan Ryan. I did talk to Brother Ryan today. I'm going to be going and seeing her tomorrow. I could not go today, but I talked to him today. And uh, she's doing okay physically, uh, but, uh, of course, the Alzheimer's is, stick, is kicking in more and more all the time. So pray for them, please. And then for our missions conference and our fall program, or the missions conference, I didn't even announce it a minute ago. I should have announced it first. But the missions conference, exciting things there. We're going to have a great time. Let's begin to pray and ask God to do some special things during our mission conference. And I was thinking about I can't go to these foreign countries, but I can help send somebody who does go. And the good part is I get part of that, the victory when they win folks to Christ because I'm investing. I'm investing for the future. What a great thing. You can't outgive God, and I'm investing for the future. And so I want to challenge you to pray about what God wants you to do this year at Missions Conference as far as your mission giving. And then, of course, our fall program, I've already mentioned some of that, and I'll not go over that. And then to pray for those affected by COVID-19, pray for our country and the city of Louisville, pray for our president, our vice president, our national, our local leaders, our governors, our representatives that represent us, our state senators, et cetera. And, of course, for the nation of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, if you would, please, now we'll do this. We'll stop and take some prayer requests at this time. Uh, but let me, before you do that, have you got the, someone got the, uh, brother, where did he go, all right? I was going to say the, the uh, we'll have, pick some, have some folks do some praying. Uh, he's not up there. Remind me to do it when I get done taking prayer requests. All right. Could you grab those, uh, Brother Tyler, and pass them out real quick? Would you do that real quick? Brother Steve, would you pray, Brother Forrest, tonight, be one of the praise? Brother Grant, would you be one that prays tonight? All right. And then I'll close us down in prayer time. All right. So you just need two. One for Grant and one for Brother Steve. All right, let's take some prayer requests you may have starting right here. All right. So pray for Anita and her family. All right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Mary Snyder. Yes, ma'am. So pray for her. All right, Sister Sandy. All right, anybody else with a prayer request? Yes, sir, Brother Rio. Hundred junior hires, is that what you said? That's got to be some kind of a problem. <laughs> Nothing like junior hires. The best part about them is when they become senior hires. <laughs> All right. If you've had children, you'd agree with me. All right. Yes, ma'am. family, and her name was Priscilla Brown. All righty. Priscilla Brown family. Pray for them and the loss of her. Yes, sir, Dr. Williams. Oh, amen. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Good. Yeah. All right. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, Lois Reber broke her arm. Brother Reber did make it to Sunday school class Sunday, but he went right back home because he couldn't leave her alone long, and he just ran in for Sunday school and jumped back in his car and took off home so he could be there with her to help take care of her. Uh, she fell and broke her arm. All right. Yes, ma'am. What's that? She's doing okay. Good. Still needs our prayers, I'm sure. All right. Brother Reber needs them too. All right. Anybody else with a prayer request before we go to the Lord in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Unspoken? Anybody else with unspoken requests? All right, God bless you. Yes, many, many unspoken. Sometimes when we hear the unspoken, we think, well, it's just unspoken, but usually the unspoken is a purpose for that and for not saying what it is, and many times it's, something that's near and dear to the heart of the person who has the unspoken and so let's don't take those lightly because they are important amen all right anybody else yes ma'am walt green what i'm sorry i still didn't miss get the last name all right yes ma'am Dr. Bill, you raised your hand again. And today's her birthday? Yes. All right. Uh, at 8.30 tonight, it's 7.20 right now. Of course, we'll, how long, however long Tyler keeps us, we'll probably be out of here before 8.30. I know we will be. Uh, but uh, if you would agree to pray at that time, would you raise your hand at 8.30? Would you go to prayer for, on behalf of Christina, the friend of the, uh, uh, this lady? Her birthday's today. She doesn't have long to live. Uh, they've been uh, at, uh, seeking Dr. Williams to pray for her and so forth. So would you pray for that if she celebrates her birthday and she doesn't have long to live? So I want to pray about that. All right, someone else back here had a hand. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's pray for her family. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's pray. You want to pair up? You want to pray with someone there next to you? Come to the altar, wherever you feel comfortable. We'll pray for a few minutes, and then uh, I'll uh, call on, and Brother Steve, you'll start first, then Brother Grant, then I'll close us out, and uh, we'll sing another song, and then we'll have Brother Tyler to come and preach to us in just a few moments. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Praying church. Church, bring her petitions to you. And we just ask that uh, you be with her pastor as he's away. And we thank you that we have so many great men that can bring messages in his absence. <clears throat> we thank you for their time and uh, preparation for each and every service. We ask that you would uh, be with Brother Tyler tonight as he brings the message. We ask that you would uh, be with a request tonight, Lord, especially we're thinking of Bobby Grady and uh, all the different problems that he has uh, uh, the heart problem and the infection and just just a world of things lord we just ask that you would take care of each and every one and 
and give him comfort and let him know that we're praying for him. <clears throat> we have James Eisenbach as he's uh, uh, having uh, health issues with the COVID and uh, just bring him through that, Lord, and, and give him comfort. We ask that you be with all the many unspoken requests. I'm sure each and every one has an unspoken, but we know that you know each and every one. They're not unspoken to you. We just ask that you would uh, be with all the uh, other aspects of the church, all the different uh, preaching services going on, the, the Spanish, the children's, and the teens, all the different ones, Lord. We just thank you for each and every leader in that group, and uh, thank you for them. We ask that uh, you would uh, be with all the, uh, the other requests, Lord. I, I didn't write them all down, but I know each and every one has... Uh, uh, their own individual requests for sickness and financial and, and uh, folks that had people laid to rest this week. Uh, be with the uh, service for Anna Renfro coming up. Lord, we just ask that you would watch there. She was a special lady that was here for years. And uh, we just ask that you would be with uh, Brother Tyler again as he brings the message tonight. And uh, we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. coma in a week, uh, he'll give him full recovery in a week's time, uh, so there will be no uh, long-lasting uh, injuries to him, and that he'll be able to um, function fully when he comes back out of the, the coma. Lord, we do also ask that you would be with Lois Weaver, and uh, thank you that uh, she's doing okay, but I pray that you continue to help her arms uh, heal, pray that you will uh, bless Brother Weaver, as well as he helps take care of her. Thank you for uh, the testimony that they both have and the blessing they are to this church. Lord, we do also ask that you would uh, give traveling mercies to the group from Franklin Road as they travel up to Mile. I pray that you uh, help them to get here safely to the camp and that uh, you would uh, speak to them, that uh, lives would be changed, and that if anyone uh, from the group is not saved, that they would be salvation that they'll be saved. Lord, I do also ask that you would uh, be with Dolores Wilson when she has her eye surgery tomorrow. Pray that that would go well, that you give um, steady hands to, to the surgeon and uh, give, give them wisdom as they operate. Um, Lord, we also pray that um, you would be with those that are in the hospital. Even now, I think of uh, Mark Estes and, and James Eisenbach. Pray that you give them a special portion of grace and comfort. And I uh, pray that you heal them and uh, enable them to get out of the hospital soon. And uh, ask for full recovery, Father, for both of them. Lord, we do thank you so much that Erin is doing much better, that she's out of the hospital. Thank you for um, just being with her the, the, through the whole uh, recovery. And I pray that you just continue to help her heal. I pray that you help her as she goes through the physical therapy and um, tries to regain uh, her strength. And Lord, we do ask for that. Father, we also ask that um, you would be with Bobby Grady. Um, Lord, you know exactly what all uh, is wrong uh, with, with his body right now. Lord, we thank you that uh, as far as we know, there's no COVID um, in his body. But I pray that um, as he struggles with different issues, Lord, that you would help him. pray that you give wisdom to those that work with them, help them to uh, get better soon. And Lord, we thank you so much for our missionary of the week, Lee Watts. Thank you for his ministry there in Frankfurt. I pray that you would continue to use him in a powerful way. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for our country, for America. Thank you for uh, the freedoms that we enjoy. I pray that you would uh, just continue to, to bless and give wisdom to our uh, local leaders president and vice president, Lord. Lord, I do pray that this evening you would uh, fill Brother Tyler with your spirit and speak through him to us, Father. I pray that you 
to be able to apply some into our life that we could be better Christians for. In Jesus' name, amen. Just take a couple of minutes, two or three or four minutes, and just pray privately as we, and then I'll come back and close this out in just a few minutes. Father, we come to your presence tonight thanking you for being our Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you that we can come to you and know you hear us. And I think of a child coming to his father and saying, Father, we have a need. There's not a father in this room that wouldn't listen and want to help their child. And I believe you listen to us and want to help too. So we bring our request to you tonight. We've been praying already for a while and Many of these requests have been mentioned. and My heart just goes out to this lady that Dr. Williams mentioned who doesn't have long to live and today's her birthday. Father, I pray that you just help her today and her family. I think about the family of these that lost loved one and how their heart got a big hole in it right now, a big empty spot. Would you comfort them? Would you strengthen them? Would you encourage them? I think about the Renfro family. Uh, Lord, of Miss Ren family, Miss Renfro. And uh, would you bless that funeral there in, 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 on Saturday? And for these that are sick in the hospital and are hurting so much, 
I just think as I was talking to Bobby today, man, he's been through so much, so much. But yet he was still encouraging today to me. And I just pray you'd help him tonight. Would you lay your hands upon him and on Brother Mark, who loves you so dearly, and Brother James, who loves you so much. God, these three men need you tonight in a special way. As they're going through different problems, they need your help. They need you to guide and direct. They need you to give wisdom to the doctors and the nurses and, and the medicines to be effective and efficient that, that they're taking. Father, please, we beg you, would you bless them and help them. And for these others that have been mentioned, I think about Carrie and what she's going through and the, what she's going to find out tomorrow after the PET scan. And I ask you to help her. I ask you to give her comfort right now. I can't even imagine if one of my daughters was facing this, how I would feel. And then to know that she's got little children and a husband that could be left without her real soon if you don't do some miracles. Father, would you bless and help? I think about these others like Michelle who doesn't understand why she can't even walk. But yet, Father, you can restore that ability to walk. You can, and we're asking you to do that. And for Billy... I know that Jody is so broken over her brother going through these difficulties. And her heart hurts so much knowing that he's got this cancer. Now he's had COVID on top of that. Oh, Father, please. And for Calvin Eisenbach and little Grayson, can't even imagine what his parents feel as they've seen him have all these surgeries already as a little bitty newborn. And then for Wanda, that you'll help her, God, and for Dolores, she has this eye surgery. And for Joan, and God, for uh, Brother Ed as he takes care of her. And Father, for our missions conference coming up, my heart, God, just goes out to these missionaries as they plan and prepare. I, I, I can't even imagine what they go through having to travel and, and from church to church and ask for money. I, I, don't understand, I, I don't know how they do it, but yet they have to to get the support they need to go and do the calling you've bidden them to do. Bless them and encourage them. Make this mission conference one that will honor and glorify you. And for our fall program, as we go through an enlargement program, would you bless it? Help us to reach people. Help us to see folks saved. And Lord, thank you again for what you're going to do. I, I just believe you're going to do some great things for all these folks who are suffering or have some issues and that have mentioned them to us tonight. Would you meet those needs? Please, Father, I pray, meet those needs. And I'm glad that you are the one that can give us a victory. I'm glad that you're a Father that has mercy and has grace and has peace and has comfort. Thank you for that. Now, bless the remainder of this service tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for praying with us this evening as we've gone to the Lord. And we'll sing another song in just a moment, and then we'll have Tyler to come. It's good to have Tyler on our staff. He came this summer. Uh, first of the summer, he and his wife came, and he's originally from out uh, LaGrange area, out that way. Uh, what's the other city you're actually from? Bedford. Bedford. Giant, giant metropolis called Bedford. You go through that, and if you blink your eyes, you didn't even know you went through Bedford. But uh, anyway, uh, but anyway, that's, that's where they're, I think you're both from there, aren't you? And it's great, and they, them, and their little one, and the little one on the way. And what a joy it is to have Brother Tyler on board. I got to know him a little bit this summer as we worked together doing some projects on, on property. I worked, he watched. Or was it the other way around? I can't remember. My mind is blank on that. But no, we worked together. I'm just teasing. As we worked on projects together, we got you, you, you talk a lot sometimes when you're doing that, sometimes more than you should. But no, we got to know each other a little bit, just find out his background, he and his wife, and how they met and so forth. That was a, that was a joy. And uh, so... It's good to have him here with us on staff teaching sixth grade. He's a sixth grade teacher, but he doesn't just do that. He does a lot of other things, too, and helps out. And so I'm so glad that he's here. He's going to come in just a moment and preach to us. But before he does, we're going to sing what he was playing earlier, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Let's just sing it together. If you would stand with me, stretch your legs one last time. Sweet Hour of Prayer. We'll sing all three verses. Sing it out with me, would you please? Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress. 
distress and grief my soul has often found relief and all escape the tempter snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer thy wings shall my petitions bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bliss and since he bids me seek his faith believe his word and trust his grace I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer may I thy consolation share till from Mount Pisgah's lofty heights I view my hope and take my flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Brother Tyler, come and preach what God's laid on your heart. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. And uh, I couldn't help but think that I get to preach at Shawnee Baptist Church. And uh, as a teenager, I got to attend the youth conferences here. And I remember sitting right over here and uh, Brother Dave Delaney. I think you all know him, don't you? Brother Dave Delaney was preaching his heart out as he does every single time. And it was, I think it was the last evening service. And uh, people were praying at the altar. And right here, it was right here, I came up and I prayed and I kneeled with Brother Dave. And I just remember uh, just be, being able to be here. It's a dream come true. I remember going to camp, Brother Reno. And uh, one message in particular, Brother Kurt Skelly was preaching. And he had two five-gallon buckets of rocks. And uh, he was talking about the Ebenezer and having a place of remembrance. And I remember he came and he kicked that bucket of rocks over, and he said, grab one. And let this be a, an Ebenezer, let this be a sign of what God has done in your life. And every time I look at that rock sitting on my desk in my study, I just can't help but think of what God has done in my life. And, uh, and to come back here and to stand in the pulpit is, is a dream come true for me and for my wife. And uh, I thank you all so much, Shawnee Baptist Church, for keeping the doors open all these years. And as I said, we got to come to the youth conference and working youth conference is a little bit different than attending youth conference I found this year. Yeah. And uh, it's a little bit busier. <laughs> Just a little bit. And uh, I saw the behind the scenes things. I want to thank the people of Shawnee Baptist Church for your work of love, your labor of love, uh, of putting on a, such a huge conference. And uh, we had a staff meeting after uh, the conference and just talked about some different things and uh, things we learned. And uh, for me, it was so neat to see the people of the church come together and to put on such a huge event. And uh, so thank you once again, uh, Shawnee, for uh, putting on such a great conference each and every year. And uh, I know how to pray for uh, Brother, Brother Joel who's coming. I, I deal with 10 to 12 uh, middle schoolers every day. I don't want to deal with 100-something. Uh, so teachers, you know how to pray. Uh, so be in prayer for Brother Joel as he comes. Colossians chapter number 3. I'll just keep talking until the butterflies go away, so we might be here a little bit. Colossians chapter 3, we'll read ver two verses. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things 
on the earth. I'm going to look at verse number two as our text tonight. Setting your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Let's pray. Lord, we do love you. And uh, we are thankful that we can come to church tonight. And Lord, I do pray that you would help us to set our affection on things above. And Lord, not to be focused on the, the things that are going on around us as much as we are uh, on this next life. And Lord, we thank you for uh, the life that you've given us. And Lord, I pray that as we live it, we would live it to honor and glorify you. And Lord, we do, pr- <coughs> we do pray for our pastor as he's away. Would you keep him safe? And Lord, would you bring him back safely tonight or here soon? And Lord, we look forward to hearing from him again. And uh, Lord, thank you for him and his family and their willingness to serve you. Lord, we thank you for uh, the staff here at Shawnee. And God, I pray that you would uh, just help us as we look into your word. We ask in your name, amen. And we're, as I said, we're going to be looking at setting your affection on things above, but not so much on the things of above, but how, to, how can we do so? Uh, how can we do that? And, uh, you know, we become so focused on the things that we have going on here on earth. Uh, and there's a lot going on. Uh, we have to wake up every day and we have to go to this place called W-O-R-K. We have to go to work every day. And uh, that's important. We got, we got bills to pay. And, uh, but we can't let that become our main focus. Uh, I'm a huge sports fan. Brother Reno, I'm a Kentucky fan. So uh, he said he was praying for me. I don't know how long he'll be praying for me. Uh, but I am a big Kentucky fan. And uh, Kentucky is like a religion. Kentucky basketball is like a religion here uh, in the state. And uh, we can't let that be our main focus. And uh, finances and other activities. I like to have fun. I like to go hunting and go fishing. Uh, but all those things can take us away from what our true purpose in life is. Yeah. And I was at First Baptist of Hammond at a youth conference one year. And uh, Brother Ray Young, I believe, was preaching. And he preached about how he used to love hunting. And he sold all of his guns because he felt that he put too much money into his guns and too much time into hunting. And th- this is Ray Young. He's a soul winner. He's, he's a man of God. And he said, I got to give that up because I spend too much time with it. Uh, none of those things that I mentioned are evil. And uh, now some might think Kentucky basketball is evil, but it's not. I promise it's not. Uh, but it's none of those things are evil. But if we let those become our focus, uh, we, we, we miss our focus from the things above for God. So let's look now. Number one, how can we focus and have our th- focus on things above Number one, mortify your members. Mortify your members. Look at verse number five there in Colossians chapter three. The Bible says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now you also put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you've put off the old man with his deeds. In order for us to focus on the things above, we've got to crucify this flesh. Each and every day. Paul said, I die once a week. I die daily. And every single day, we've got to have a spiritual funeral for our flesh. And for me, here these last three months, we've, uh, we've been living in that great metropolis of Bedford. And uh, does anybody actually know where Bedford is? A couple of you. It, it, we, I drive down every morning. That time, I, 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 how can I use this time for something else besides just driving? And uh, the first month I was here, I was able to listen to almost the entire New Testament just on the drive to work in the morning. And I was able to, able to pray more and able to do more just in listening to the Word of God and use that time. Some of you might have a commute. Use that time in the morning. Don't, it makes traffic a little bit easier. It's harder to get mad at someone who cuts you off when you're listening to the Bible and uh, when you're praying. But I would have that quote-unquote quote spiritual funeral there in my car on the way in every morning. And I would say, Lord, whatever I need to do to, to disrobe of this flesh, help me do it. Help me to put you first in all that I say and do. When I get to work in the morning, may I put you first. May I put whatever you have in my mouth. May it be honoring and glorifying to you. Galatians 5, 24 says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh 
And right there in uh, Colossians chapter 3, 5 down through 9, he gave a long list. And uh, for the sake of time, I won't go through it. But all of those things that he mentioned, the fornication, uncleanness, and so on, those are, those are things of the flesh. And those are things that we've got to put off if we're going to set our affection on things above. Number two, we're moving right along tonight. Put on the new man. Verse number 10 of Colossians chapter 3. Verse number 9 says, lie not one to another. See that you've put off the old man with his deeds. Well, if you put off the old man, you better put something back on. Because that old man is going to creep back up again. That old man's going to say, hey, I, got, I need somewhere to go. Each and every day, number, verse number 10, have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the, after the image of him that created him. If you, if you have your Bibles there, if you could turn back to Gal, uh, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. The new man is the spirit. We've got to have that Holy Spirit living not only within us, but living on us. We've got to have, uh, have him in order to set our affection on the things above. Galatians chapter number 5, we see uh, the fruits of the Spirit. I lost my place, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we see in Galatians 5, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And if you go through that list, he explains all of those. And I want to look at that first one, love. I'm really, really glad God loves us. I'm really glad he loved us when it, we were hard to love. He loves the unlovable. And let that be something, let Christ's example of love to love in the unlovable be an example to us. To love those who, they probably don't even deserve the love. They, might, they, they are hard to love. I've got family members who are hard to love. Amen. I've got coworkers, Brother Andrew, who are hard to love. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm at work. I forgot. I'm sorry. Love the unlovable. Joy. Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is what? The joy of the Lord is your strength. You ever seen someone who doesn't have the joy of the Lord on them? They're a weak Christian. And for us, in order for us to be a strong Christian, we've got to have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. In Philippians 4.7 We've got to have the peace of God which passeth all understanding. And that peace shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. If the last year and a half has taught us anything, that there's not much peace in the world. It's taught us that there's more chaos than there is peace. And I don't know where the world goes to for comfort. I don't know where the world goes to when they're hurting. I don't understand it. I'm glad that we have that peace that does pass all understanding, and it keeps our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Long-suffering. Aren't you glad God's long-suffering with us? Husbands, aren't you glad your wife is long-suffering with you? Yes. yes, amen, Brother Moon. Brother Moon said amen as loud as he said amen all night. Long-suffering, because time after time after time I mess up, usually with the same things, right? And uh, I have, our son's 19 months old, and it's like, no, don't touch that. No, don't touch that. No, don't touch that. Landon, don't touch that. And, we have to, and God says, you're the same way, Tyler. You do the same thing. Tyler, don't do that. Tyler, don't do that. Tyler, don't do that. And not that God treats us like a 19-month-old, but I feel like sometimes we act like it, don't we? We act immature in our faith. We act immature in our spirituality and keep going back to the same filth and the same sin or even the weight that doth so easily hinder us. And we look at ourselves, like, why, why can't I get the victory? And we're not letting God deal with it, but I'm thankful for his, his long suffering. The gentleness, someone who's kind, not harsh or rough, and that's the way he is with us. And his example, uh, when he de deals with the little children, and he's, he's dealing with the, the masses, and he's got the, the people of Israel around him, and he calls a little child. And he said, this, this is what you need to be like. And you see the gentleness of Christ even there as he deals with the children. Goodness, there is none good. The Bible says there's none that doeth good. No, not one. And I'm, I'm right there in there with you. I'm, I'm not good. There's nothing in me good except for that of Jesus Christ. And we're made righteous through, or made righteous or good through Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful for that. 
We've got to have faith. Without faith, it is what? It's impossible. You can try to do all that you want, but if you aren't doing it in faith, it's going to be impossible to please our Heavenly Father. We're going to strive, and we live out in the country, we get stuck in the mud a lot. We're just spinning our wheels spiritually. We're just spinning our wheels spiritually if we don't have faith. If we go to, if we, a lot of times I've been guilty of this. I have a, I have a prayer request and I bring it to the altar. But in my mind, I'm thinking, God can't do that. Anybody ever been like, is that, or am I the only carnal Christian? Am I the, God, you can't do You can't do that. And God's not, God's not happy with that. God's not pleased with that. It, we've got to have faith to please God. Temperance, meekness, self-control, strength under control. And this, this is all being filled with the Spirit. And we can't be filled with the Spirit. Or we, we have to be filled with the Spirit, I'm sorry, if we want to be looking above. Galatians 2, 20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We've got to have that putting on of the new man. Number three, number three, have love one for another. Look at verse number 14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Verse 14 again, put on charity. What is, what is Paul saying in 1 Corinthians? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. I'm not speaking of angel, like angels. That's some serious preaching right there, Brother, Brother Williams. Preaching with the tongues of men and of angels. And have not charity, I am become a sounding brass. Or a tinkling cymbal. It's just white noise. You know, we put white noise or put a fan on to go to sleep at night. And that's all it is to God. Is if, we ha- if what we do it doesn't have love behind it, it's just white noise. What is our motivation? What is our motive for serving God? Is it because our pastor expects us to be here? Is it because we're checking off a list? Oh, going to Sunday school. I'm good for the week. I went to church on Sunday morning. Is that our motivation? If our motivation is not to have love for one another, to love the unlovable, it is a uh, sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. There's no substance to it. John 13, 35, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. The church is not a place for Christians to fight and argue and bicker. The church is not a place for us to have our, our arguments and quarrels with one another because the world looks, like that, looks at that and goes, what, what is different about you? The, pe- the w- people of the world should look at us and say, you know what, there's something different about the way they love one another. There's something different about the way they get along with one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. When we preach, we should preach hard, those that preach. Teachers, preach with a with a tear in your eye, though. Preach with love. It's not our job to condemn. It's just our job to lay out what God has put in his word and let him do the work. We're just the, we're just the messenger. Let him deal with each individual heart. So number one, we saw in order to have this upward look and to, to work on it better, we've got to mortify our members. Put on that new man, which is the spirit. Thirdly, have love one for one another. And lastly, number four, probably one of my favorite, is to dwell in the Bible. Dwell in the Bible. Look at verse number 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Dwell in in the Bible. That word dwell has a, has a connotation of sticking around for a little bit. It's not a, okay, what can I read real fast? Let's go find the shortest psalm in the Bible so I can get my Bible reading done for the day. That's not dwelling. That might work for a five-year-old because it might take them 10, 20 minutes to read three or four verses. 
But for those of us who can read and have understanding, let's spend some time with God. Let's not just get uh, just 10, 5, 10 minutes in the Word of God and be like, okay, I'm good for the day. That goes back to our love for God. We're just checking it off our list. Don't just check it off your list. Spend some time. The Word of God brings wisdom. George Washington said, It is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly implore His protection and favor. That was our first president. The Congress of 1782 said, The Congress of the United States recommends and approves the Holy Bible for use in all schools. I don't think that would fly over in 2021 today. Our founding fathers knew where their source of power came from. Amen. It came from God. There was a book, Patrick Henry said, worth all the other books ever printed. Speaking of the Bible. What we hold in our hands and our laps and, or sit on our shelves collecting dust is more powerful than just a book. It's more powerful than any other book and it's worth more than all other books that's ever been written. Daniel Webster said, education without the Bible is useless. And that's what I love about Northside Christian Academy. In all, all subjects, the Bible is intertwined through science and through history, through, even through math, because we see the order and design of God in, in numbers, in, in, in math, and in English. Education without the Bible is useless. If, it, if that was true over 200 years ago, it's still true today. We've got to have the Bible. We've got to spend time with God each and every day. I was teaching my class yesterday about why it's so important uh, to, for Bible time and for prayer. We, we sit here and we hear a 20, 30, 40 minute message. Brother Reno's preaching 60, 70, 40, 80 minute. I'm just kidding. We hear a message from God and God's having a conversation with us. I think it's what you said. We have a full, a full circle conversation when we come and pray. And that's what I love about the altar. And the way he pulled that out on Sunday morning was so beautiful. And to have that time of prayer. But God doesn't just speak to us in, our, in messages either. He's given us everything we need to know right here. And when we open it up, we're listening and we're hearing from God. He's talking to us. It'd be pretty rude of me to ignore my wife when she talked to me for 45 minutes. And to not have anything to say back to her. But how often do we even spend 30, 40 minutes in our Bible and say, oh, i got to work now, and we don't pray. We've got to, have that, we've got to have that perfect union of dwelling in the Bible and that perfect union of praying. Because listen, I want to have my look, my look to be above, have that upward look. You've got to have the inward look, the outward look. Let's make sure we have the looking above Mortify our members, put on the new man, have love one for another, and spend time in God's Word each and every day. And that will help you. There's other things that I could have gone into, but for sake of time, that, that's just a few basic things to have that upward look a little bit better each and every day. Every head bowed, every eye closed, we're right, right on time. Let's pray. Lord, we do love you. Father, it's so, so glad to be here tonight. Thank you for your Word. Thank you that you desire to fellowship with us. Thank you that you desire to spend time with your children. And Father, we are thankful also for your word. And Lord, as much as you desire to spend time with us, God, I pray that you'd give the desire to us to spend that time with you. And Lord, help us to crucify our flesh and to, uh, to put on the new man each and every day. Lord, help us to have love one for another. And Lord, spend time with you. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for what you're, you've done already and what you're going to do. We ask in your name. Amen. Please stand to your feet with me as we have a few minutes, moments rather, of invitation time. Maybe God spoke to your heart. Maybe you need to find your way to the nearest aisle, down the aisle, the front. Let God speak to you and through you.